I'm recording this Rack of the Week on Saturday. Uh, I was sick on Monday, five days ago, when I got back from Vegas. And today might have been the very first day that I kind of felt 100% myself. I'm not coughing, finally. My voice is still a little low and gravelly, but I feel good and uh, been catching up on a lot of work. I wanted to do a Rack of the Week with John Schmidt. I don't have to worry about copyright because I recorded this on my home table when John Schmidt was here playing on my table. This is going to be short and sweet. It's just about nudging balls during the Rack, uh, but I hope you enjoy it. Uh, I think it's got a ton of value, and I'm going to be experimenting with it. So let's get into the Rack. John comes to the table uh, after a missed break shot with 15 balls on the table. Take a look at his first shot choice. manufactured a break ball on his first shot now i didn't even think about it i might have shot the one in the side or the the five i may have chosen to shoot the two in a partial pocket but to think about nudging the seven up that wouldn't have occurred to me and that's a i think that's a big change and something i got to start thinking about a lot a, a lot more let's take a look at the next shot so that's his very first shot now, he's got the one in the side again, but he's shooting this with a soft inside to kill the cue ball so he gets a shot on the three. That's good strategy. You know, these are just a tiny bit tied up, so once you shoot the three ball to the right, uh, then you can come back a shot later or any time later and shoot the eight ball to the left, and then, it, you know, everything's opened up. So that's good strategy, but watch what he does here. Nudge the seven ball over. There's there's absolutely zero danger in nudging that ball over, and uh, the benefits are tremendous. You're 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 move, getting out of the way. Uh, John often talks about uh, clearing paths to pockets. So he's clearing a path for one of these balls. Should he, maybe he'll shoot this ball later, and then he's got a path for this ball this way. Plus, you're putting the six ball in a better location. It's a little bit low, but the six ball could be a break ball as well. This is something I noticed when I was watching uh, John a little bit closer is um, just seeing the entire rack more and, and noticing opportunities to nudge balls the general rule is such as this where all the balls are wide open that you don't ever want to nudge a ball well i don't think that's so true there are no hard and fast rules you do want to nudge balls if it's to your advantage and it's 100 percent safe as this shot was so let's uh let's continue where would you go to from the eight Wow, that's interesting between those two balls he's got balls that go over uh oh, okay I was going to say he has balls that go this direction into the side pocket. I'm having trouble finding my tool. This direction into the side pocket. But notice he, he's not afraid to uh, go back and forth. So he shot one ball to come over here, another ball to come this way, now back this way. Just back and forth, back and forth, moving the cue ball around. He's got an up table ball to deal with, but... So that eight was to get on the six because both of these balls or all those balls go in this pocket. So he's kind of got a, a shooting gallery going this way. Now, now this is the middle of the rack and end pattern time. What does he do? Bumps a ball above the break ball into that key ball territory. That's going to help help that pattern. So he was about to shoot this ball on the side, but that might be a key ball. Okay, so shoot this ball, and now it seems obvious to me, and and he it may not have occurred to John until just then as well, but the, the pattern is pretty obvious. You're, you're going to use these two balls to set up for each other. Um, I think it's a bad idea to shoot the ball that he did in order to shoot this ball in the side to play position for the one in the side and then to use the eight to get on this because you're you're banking everything and landing on this one ball perfectly as key ball. Um, by leaving two balls down table, John is obviously going to shoot the uh, the one ball and go get the eight. Then you can play position for this ball to use this ball as key ball drawback, or you can play position. Um, you can come this direction. Let me clear my lines. You can come this direction to play position for this ball in this pocket and then get position on this this ball on the side so either way works but the point is these two balls play off from each other um and and so that's not a mistake 
that John, that he ended up leaving those two balls like that. But look at the benefit of bumping the one ball up here. If he didn't do that, he would have probably had to draw back and then play some other type of draw shot uh, from from the ball that was sitting from the one ball in this position in order to come up there. I think it's just a lot of situational awareness. Something that just really hasn't occurred to me and hasn't been a big part of my game. And I'm, I'm putting a lot more thought into that. Um, just kind of more situational in awareness, seeing the whole table and those little opportunities to bump balls. This is just a, a small example, but I tell you, as I was watching, watching John play, uh, rack after rack, he was doing it again and again and again. Something interesting here, and I'm, I might uh, I might ask him about it because I didn't notice this when he was shooting. But watch the amount of side spin that John's putting on this ball. That's a lot of of left English, and I don't think I mean was that to make the ball. I've noticed that uh, previously when when um, watching Thorsten Holman, he'll put a lot of outside English on his break balls. So I'm going to look into that. Uh, I mean, that can't be smart to be using English to pocket the ball. But is that for controlling the cue ball? What's the reason for? I'm because on that shot, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to tend to want to shoot it with a center ball or maybe just a little bit of outside English, helper English, as they say, not two tips or more of left English as I just saw. So if you have any suggestions or guesses on why you think uh, John and Thorsten and possibly other players are, are doing that, I'd be interested in that as well. But I hope you, you, you saw the, the idea. This was a pretty simple and short uh, rack of the week. But the idea was looking for lots more opportunities, especially when the balls are, are, are already open. You don't necessarily have to avoid hitting balls. Do so strategically to improve the lie of balls. Give yourself a, more options in your end patterns and uh, more options for break shots. Hope you like that. Remember, if you're going to play straight pool, play it straight. See you next week on Rack of the Week. Bye.